hello what's up youtube in this tutorial i will show you how you can easily understand the mixer brush tool and the most common mistakes regarding the mixer brush tool and also why your mixer brush tool may not be working very well and in this tutorial you are going to also learn how you can retain skin texture when you're retouching your images in photoshop so if at all you have always had issues regarding retaining skin texture and also how to use the mr brush tool simply hit the like button and also don't forget to subscribe this channel and if i don't have any other questions you can drop it in the comment section so i'm hoping this is going to be a very beneficial kind of tutorial so this is the image that we have right now and it was taken by gmax studios so i'm just going to be showing you how you can first of all retain skin texture remember retaining skin texture starts at the very first point of the gaussian blur radius that you really put into the image so just going to be understanding that and for this case i'll just come and i duplicate the background layer twice by pressing ctrl j or you can press command j and rename this to low frequency and i'm going to name this to high frequency remember the high frequency layer contains the textures and the low frequency layer contains the colors so the low frequency layer is the hero of frequency separation because this determines the amount of skin texture that will remain with in the final or retouched image. So just come to the low frequency layer and select it. Then come to filter. Then you're going to come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. Like I said, this is the most important step regarding frequency separation and the amount of skin textures that you're going to be remaining with in your final or retouched image. So looking at this image right here, you have to use this area to determine or to look for an area that has more skin textures than the rest of your image so use this handle you left click and move around to look for that area that has more skin details so i use this as a reference point for my skin texture because i feel like this area has or contains more skin textures so by blurring out these skin details the rest of the tiniest details or skin textures are also going to be lost out so how to blur simply left click and hold down and you drag this as you you are releasing it so you left click and hold down as you're releasing it so you want to stop at the point when these details are just starting to disappear don't take it until you can completely notice or you you are you can completely fail to notice where the details are you have to stop at the point when these textures are just starting to disappear the point is stop at the point when the textures are just starting to disappear and you can still notice where they were initially so just come to the radius and start taking it up so remember we are stopping at the point when the textures are just starting to disappear so at round seven you can still identify where the textures were but you cannot see them visibly or clearly and stop at that point and simply hit ok so remember the textures we have lost out on this step are going to be the ones that we're going to be remaining with in the final touch image so just come the high frequency and now activate it then come to image and come down to apply image so when you come to apply image it's going to open up the apply image window and the source is the name of the image so the layer from which we want to extract the textures is the low frequency layer. so select it the channel has to be rgb and the blend mode deter is determined by the bit depth of your image so for a 16-bit image the blend mode has to be add and for an 8-bit image has to be subtract so for a 16-bit image blending add opacity 100 percent the scale is 2 and offset 0 and make sure you turn on the invert option preserve transparency and mask are not checked then for an 8-bit image you use the same settings above here but the invert option is not turned on the blending has to be subtract the scale has to be 2 and offset 128 and preserve transparency and mask are not checked and you can see the textures are on the gray kind of layer so for my case i'll use 16-bit settings and i invert and i'll simply click ok so after doing this anything i'm going to do i'm just going to change the blend mode from normal and i'm going to change it all the way down to linear light to hide the gray effect from affecting the image so i'll group these two so remember right now we have so to group you select and press ctrl g or you can drag the selected layers to the folder icon to put them in a group so i'm just going to name this group to frequency separation so the most important step for retaining skin textures 
has been covered by the first step of this tutorial. So next you're going to be learning about the most common mistakes regarding the Mr. Brush tool and why your Mr. Brush tool may not give may not be giving you the results that you need when you're trying to do skin retouching in Photoshop. So the very first mistake that most of you tend to do is selecting the wrong layer. So if I told you you are using the Mr. Brush tool, let me first of all go through the settings for the Mr. Brush tool before I can even go into the mistakes. So for the Mr. Brush tool, you come under the brushes, right click, and you select the Mr. Brush tool. Then if at all you have changed the workspace for your Photoshop, you may find the Mr. Brush tool below here. So after setting the Mr. after selecting it, come right here and with the hardness of zero, select soft round brush. And we select the option that says clean brush right here. And we have two options next that is load brush af after each stroke and clean brush after each stroke. So we have to select the clean one because as we are retouching, we want the brush to be automatically clean. Remember, as we are brushing the skin tones of the image, we are dealing with different overing colors of the skin. So we want the brush to be clean every single time we deselect or we stop brushing one area and we go to another. So we want Photoshop to automatically do that for us. So just come to the weight and the weight has to be 9%, load 75, mix 90, flow 100%, make sure smoothing is at 10% and also make sure sample all layers is not turned on. So I'll just be coming back to this in a bit. So make sure sample all layers is not turned on in this case. So like I said, the very first mistake regarding most of you, if I told the Mr. Brush tool is not working well, is you select the wrong layer. Remember, if I told you select the wrong layer and you start painting on the skin of your model. So I've selected the wrong layer purposely. So in this case, I've selected the texture layer. And you can see when you select the texture layer and you try brushing on the texture layer, you can notice that the image gets blurry. The reason for this, you can see this area. The reason for this is because you have used the Mr. Brush tool which is already wet on a layer that contains information and in this way it is going to be blurring out and hiding the texture information. So always when you're using the Mr. Brush tool, always select the low frequency layer because it is the layer that we want to mix and not the high frequency layer or the textures. We want to mix the colors in the low frequency layer. So after understanding that, the next thing or the most mistake I tend to see when it comes to using the Mr. Brush tool is leaving the sample all layers option turned on. So when you leave it turned on and you leave the texture layer or the high frequency layer also visible and you try painting on the skin, you can notice that you have commanded the Mr. Brush tool right here to sample information from all the visible layers in our frequency separation group and it's going to paint that kind of rough texture into the low frequency line. You can see how ugly this looks. So always make sure when you're retouching, the sample all layers option is not turned on. So make sure this is not turned on. And after doing that, if at all you are retouching and the mixer brush tool is showing a plus icon, simply press the caps lock key and reduce or increase on the size of the mixer brush tool. You can use the bracket keys on the keyboard. So after ensuring that all that is done, always when you're retouching, always retouch at a distance. So don't zoom all the way in because when you zoom all the way in, you won't be able to see the uneven skin tra transitions of the image and you may end up overdoing it and it may look like a plastic image. So always retouch at a distance and at a distance you can easily see or identify the uneven skin tone transitions. So we are going to part three of this video and that is how to apply the Mr. Brush tool. The direction and the amount of size that you have to apply and the right areas to apply the Mr. Brush tool. So this is basically part three of this video. So in part three, we want to learn about the application like I've said. So after selecting the right layer, which is the low frequency layer, simply come and hide the high frequency layer. So after hiding it, you can now notice or identify the areas that have 
uneven skin tone transitions in this image. So the trick about using the mixer brush tool, you always have to train your eyes to see and identify the areas that have uneven skin tone transitions. By uneven, I mean if at all a color is not where it is meant to be, simply mix it and paint over it so that it can blend into the predominant or the color that is having the majority of or covering the majority of the space in that area. So for example, let's just apply the Mr. Brush tool. So you can see if at all on the forehead area we wanted to apply the Mr. Brush tool, we make sure the brush size is within the area we are going to be working on and always move the Mr. Brush tool in the direction of how an area is shaped. So for example, if at all we are at work on the forehead area, we shouldn't move the Mr. Brush tool in this direction. You can see this. You shouldn't move it in this direction. Always move it in a top-down kind of direction. You can see the forehead area is moving in the top-down direction right here. So that is the direction in which we have to move the Mr. Brush tool. So if at all I wanted to move it or to mix this area, you simply reduce on the size and you can start to have this dark area that is existing within this as a predominant color. So how to apply? You left click and hold down. So after left clicking and holding down, so you left click, hold down and you drag to mix. So you left click and hold down and drag to mix. So when you're comfortable that you have mixed that area, you release the left click button and you come to another area, left click and hold down and continue dragging to mix that area. And in that way, you can notice that the image is going to be having better colors regarding the blending of the skin tones. So you can start we have a dark color right here. So if I told you want to eliminate this color, we have to come to the middle of the eyebrows and mix that area. And as soon as you mix that dark color is going to be blended within the majority of the color. So when it comes to an area where it is transitioning from one color to another, get the brush to a smaller size and you mix that areas to create that nice and smooth blend or transition between those colors and you can notice that when we turn off the texture or high frequency layer and we start mixing the image is going to be looking a little bit plastic the reason for it looking plastic is because we have hidden the high frequency layer and but when we come back and we turn on the texture or high frequency layer you can notice that the textures are still intact so when you turn on the before and after, in this case, you can notice that we have perfectly retouched that area and we have mixed this dark color which was existing within this area and it has created a nice and even transition. So I'll turn this back off and you can see that this area has a number of colors that are really confusing, especially dark lines right here. So I'm just going to move use a small brush and mix that area. So you keep on mixing and making sure that the brush is within the area or the range of the area you're trying to work on. So, so you can see that now the skin is looking better and it looks even. So mix those colors and mix just like that to get rid of the uneven transitions within those areas. So you can see the forehead area looks even and it looks uniform in this case. So when we come back to the high frequency layer and now turn it back on, you can notice that the forehead area has been worked on and it has been perfected in this case. So this is the before and after, before, after. So what we are going to do, we are going to come back and continue working on different areas. So hide the high frequency layer and with the low frequency layer still selected so you can see the cheek area is moving in this direction so it is more of a diagonal direction so reduce on the size and mix these colors alone just like that and make sure the brush is moving in that direction so we have mixed these kind of mid-tones existing on the cheek area so when it comes to the dark area simply Reduce on the size to be within the dark area and simply mix that area. So in order to mix that area, we are going to reduce on the size and make sure that the size of the brush is simply within 
the range of the area that we want to work on and we blend that area in that given direction so keep on working on the image until when you feel like all the skin tones are really perfected and they look great so for this area reduce on the size and just work just like that and you can see that the skin is going to be looking a little bit plastic but the colors or the skin tones are going to be looking even and better so work on the rest of the image until it is perfected and it looks great so this is how you can use and understand the mr brush tool in the best way possible and if at all you have been seeing double lines for my mixer brush it is because my screen record always has to show you guys where i am mixing so the double lines or the double circles have nothing to do with the mixer brush so this is it for this video and if at all you have learned a thing or two from this video don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching and you're not subscribed to this channel Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching and see you in yet more amazing tutorials. And don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.